And that leads us to the topic for today, which is expected value. Our learning target for today is to be able to calculate expected value for an event. Expected value is not the same thing as most likely outcome. All right, well, let's look at some definitions here. Uh, expected value is just the average, right? Plain and simple, expected value means the average. So if you have uh, an event with multiple different outcomes, the average of all of those outcomes is what we're going to expect to happen. Maybe not on one particular trial, but over the course of many trials, we take all those possible, all the different outcomes that, that happen, average them together, that's going to tell us what we should expect, right? Because, I mean, that's actually what average is, is telling us. Add all these up, divide by the number of possibilities, right? So that's saying, here's all the things that could happen if I divide by the number of trials. Here's the, you know, the mean is uh, telling you this is what you should expect to happen. It's not going to be this number all the time, but that's that's our expectation. It's going to put it right there in the, in the arithmetic middle. Okay, in blue. Um, hold on. Before we get to blue, I said this several times, but I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. So expected value is the average. It is not necessarily an actual outcome. Okay, we just saw that uh, in the example I did for the problem from day three. Okay, the average was nine fish per spin, but that's not an actual outcome. Nobody can actually win nine fish because that's not one of the numbers on the spinner. Okay, sometimes you get, you know, things work out and the average is an actual outcome. Okay, but that's beside the point. That's just a happy coincidence. Oh, look, it's the same number. It showed up in two places. Okay, the average does not need to be an actual outcome in order to be the expected value. Okay, in blue. Uh, definition for fair game. This is a statistics vocabulary word, right? A fair game is defined as a game where the cost to play is equal to the expected value of the outcomes or the winnings. So if you think about like going to a carnival or something like that, you got to like pay this many tickets and you could win those prizes. So something like that. Um, different use of the word fair, but uh, whatever it costs you admission to play the game is going to be equal to the expected value of your winnings, All right? So maybe in the, you, know, you play the game, if you lose, you get nothing. And if you win, then you get this big prize, right? Well, if you got to pay uh, a dollar and then there's two possible outcomes, you, know, you, you win or you lose. If you lose, you get zero. Winning would have to be two because two plus zero is going to average to get one. Right, so that'd be the the cost to play in order to be fair. Right, games don't have to be fair, but that's the definition for what a fair game means. Okay, in green, the expected value of one event can be simply multiplied to find the expected value for a repeated event. We just saw that a second ago, several seconds ago, in that problem from day three. The manager of the wheel of fish said, "What's the average?" And now, if blah 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 is the number of people that spin the wheel of fish, the expected value for that many people. I just multiply. Here's the average times the number of people, and I'm going to expect that's the uh, expected value that people will win over the course of that many repetitions. Okay. All right. So here's another example. Um, if you flip a game in a game, you get to flip a coin twice, and then you record the number of heads that occur. So it's kind of a weird game, but here's the way you get scored. You get 10 points if you flip two heads. You get zero points if you get one head. And you get five points if you get no heads. So we want to find out what is the expected value of the number of points that you would win each turn. Okay, so I pulled some work that we did previously. We've got a table that we've made in the past about uh, two coin flips. So I could flip heads and tails, heads and heads, tails and tails, tails and heads. Those are the four possible outcomes for two coin flips. How did you know there were four outcomes? The coin has two sides and there were two flips. Two to the power of two is four. There should be four different outcomes. Here they are. Also, I could look at Pascal's triangle. I could write this stuff down. All right. So what are the outcomes? To calculate expected value, I'm going to list my outcomes first. Okay, the outcomes are I can get zero heads 
I can get one head, I can get two heads. Okay, well, there's a value for each of those. Zero heads, it says, is worth zero, uh, zero heads is worth five points. One head, highlighted in blue, that's worth zero points. And two heads in green, that's worth 10 points. Okay, next column is the frequency. Okay, so from my table over here of outcomes with heads and tails, zero heads, that would be everything is tails, has a frequency of one. Right there. One heads. Okay, well, that could be either this one or this one. That's a total of two. So my frequency is two. And the last one, two heads. There's only one way to get two heads. So the frequency is going to be one. Right? Or since I've written them in order, my outcome, zero head, one heads, two heads, those go in increasing value. I can just take the numbers out of Pascal's triangle. That'd be row two, one, two, one. All right. Same thing. You get it from a variety of different places. Okay, so then I am going to multiply the value times the frequency and get the product. So straight across, 5 times 1 is 5, 0 times 2 is 0, 10 times 1 is 10. Okay, the outcomes I'm not using for the product, I just want the value and the frequency. And then I'm going to add up those last two columns. So the frequency is going to add up to 4. The products, add those, 5 plus 0 plus 10, that adds to 15. To find the expected value, 15 divided by 4, and that is 3.75. So the expected value, every time I play this game, I get to flip my two coins. Pew, pew. On average, I will get 3.75 points. Okay. Obviously, that's not an actual score possibility. I only get five points or zero points or 10 points. But based on the point values and the frequencies, the average is going to be 3.75, right? So if a whole bunch of people played this game, we add up all of their points, divide by the number of people, the average amount is going to come out to 3.75, right? That's basically what we've just done. All right. So the expected value is what I should expect for planning purposes. It is not necessarily an actual outcome. Okay, if I was going to play this game uh, at a carnival or, or at a casino or something, don't go to casinos. The fair price, in order to make this a fair game, I would need to pay the equivalent of whatever 3.75 points is worth in order to have a chance to play the game. So every time I want to have a turn at this game, flipping the coins, I would pay 3.75 points, right? And uh, sometimes... I'm going to get zero, and so I lose. Sometimes I'm going to, I'm going to get five points, and so I'd win a little bit. Sometimes, uh, if I'm lucky, I'm going to win big. I get 10 points. Woo! Most of the time, I'm going to lose, right? Because it's got a frequency of two. It's going to happen twice as often as either, either of the other two things. So, uh, right, that's the way that goes. All right, well, let's take a look at one, uh, one final example here. Uh, there's a bunch of... Uh, currency in a bag. So I got a single $20 bill, two $10 bills, three $5 bills, and four $1 bills all placed in a bag. Uh, you reach your hand in blindfolded, you pick a bill out at random. What's the expected value for the amount chosen? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and combine the first two columns, the value and the outcome, because all of the outcomes here are numerical. I get this many dollars or that many dollars. They're numerical. So I don't actually need a separate column if the outcomes are numerical. So I could get a 20, I could get a 10, I could get a 5, I can get a 1. Frequency. Well, there's only one $20 bill. There are two 10s, there are three 5s, and there are four 1s. So there are my frequencies. Products, so just multiply straight across. 20 times 1, that's 20. 10 times 2, that's 20. 5 times 3 is 15, and 1 times 4 is 4. Add down the frequency column, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 10, 20 plus 20 plus 15 plus 4 is 30, uh, sorry, 59. And to get the expected value, I'm going to divide that 59 divided by 10. Okay. 
and that is $5.9. Or if we want to write it like normal, uh, when we write money, we usually use two decimal points because cents, right? Okay, so uh, expected value, $5.90. Here you can start to see some of the benefits of using a table like this. Could you just add all 10 of those things together? Yeah, there's a 20 plus 10 plus 10 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus, 5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Add them all up, divide by 10, you get the same answer, right? But you can start to see the, the, the advantage of using a table like this. If I combine, since there's two or three or four of the same item, uh, it gets to be faster. The more of these repeated outcomes there are, the faster uh, this approach is. All right, so the expected value is obviously not an outcome. There is not a $5.90 bill because that doesn't even exist. Uh, expected value is not the same as an outcome. If I was to ask you what is the most likely outcome, you reach into the bag, grab something, pull it out, probably you win $1. That is the most likely outcome because it has the highest frequency, right? If this was uh, some kind of, uh, if I wanted to make it a fair game, whether it's, I don't know, some kind of, well, if I want to make it a fair game, then I have to charge people. If I'm running the game, I'm going to charge people $5.90. They reach into the bag, they grab something. Everybody is either a winner or a loser. There's no possible way to come out even because it's not a $5.90 bill. If I was doing this for uh, like as a fundraiser, um, kind of like what a raffle would be normally, um, you know, everybody buys raffle tickets and then there's some people who win, right? Well, the point of a raffle is a fundraiser or the point of a casino is that the casino makes money. And so those are not fair games, right? Uh, so it'd be kind of weird to do something like this and say, oh, it's going to be a fair game. That'd be like, that'd be weird. Um, why would you do that? <laughs> uh, I don't know. But that's beside the point. So we're trying to trying to learn some ideas here. So 